everyone, uh, it's Emma here. And uh, well, after three years, I think it's time to make a video about glissandos. <laughs> so despite the fact that pretty much everyone is saying that in glissand, you simply need to quickly glide your hand across the keyboard, nothing much to do, the easiest type of technique. But oh no, that's not that easy. So uh, without correct angle of your hand, correct movements, imagination, intonation, with weight, you wouldn't be able to really control glissandos, keep getting stuck because of the key edges, <laughs> making painful blasters on the tip of your skin, near your finger, maybe. So let's take a closer look at what glissando really is. Glissando on white keys is a simple C major scale played very fast and for this purpose instead of using separate fingers we use one hand stroke. So the principle of playing, imagining and intonating with weight in glissando remains the same. Uh, so let's first uh, take a look at the playing part. When we talk about hand position and movements there are three tips to remember. First. Using thumbnail up and down and glissando make it uh, much more safe and easier to play them. So what I mean is when you play glissando, you simply use the fingernail of your thumb. Now I know that some people like to use this, and I just uh, want to tell that if you use this way of playing, make sure that you. Uh, your angle of your hand, the angle of the hand is high enough so you would play almost vertical, like this. So, because if you drop it a little bit <laughs> too much, then you will burn the skin uh, over here. So for me, thumbnail is always much more safe, that's why I like to use it up and down both hands. Uh, now, still here, you need to make sure that the angle of your hand over here is 90 degrees exactly. So when you look, it's basically flat and horizontal, because if it's less, like this, then you might end up hurting yourself, your skin over here. So if you play like this, not high enough, okay? So this will ensure that your skin will never get in touch with the key. Uh, second, keep your arm light, easy, and loose. That will help to avoid getting stuck. So what I mean is that when you play and you keep your hand light, it's uh, you never stuck. But sometimes you can you can experience something like this. I remember I had it a lot when I just started making this sound because you want to kind of control it and you don't know how to exactly control it, so you tense your hand and you lose the the fluency of the movement. And third, leading your hand with the elbow will help to avoid getting stuck as well. So very often a student will just focus on the hand and move it first like this. You see, uh, so that increase, uh, how to say, the stiffness in your muscles. And again, that leads to, uh, to tension. So let the elbow lead the way. So instead of playing like this, Make sure elbow always go goes first. So 90 degree angle, loose hand, elbow, 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 everything from the elbow. This way. Now when the outer sensations are ready, let's talk about the inner sensations because that's important. When you have double nose glissando, first start working with a melody that is in your thumb. Uh, let's say you have this, right? You have this example. So take the melody that uh, is in your thumb. Since white keys glissando, later you will add the second note, okay? But start working with just one line. Since uh, white keys glissando is just a C major scale, it's important to still imagine every note with movement glissando in between notes to control the sound better. 
So I would imagine in this scale, every note, if I go up to the right, if I go down to the left, and in between notes, I would still imagine a little bit of sound. So if I sing, what I imagine will sound. Again, you can use either sound texture or let's say any other timbres, whatever, um, whatever it's easy for you to imagine. And when you add intonation with weight, Feeling this glissando in your vocal cords, that will bring ultimate freedom and light to your playing. So let me show you uh, what I mean. So I'm going to play just one melody in a slow tempo, which is, it's glis in glissando everything is like other way around. In glissando, playing in slow tempo is, is the most difficult, playing in fast tempo, the easiest one. So, okay, so with weight, intonation, and try to follow imagination. slow tempo with gradual increasing and decreasing of dynamics or letter control dynamics better distributing weight while playing so what I mean I would imagine again this melody just that melody with crescendo with diminuendo with diminuendo and then play Okay, in the first there is also accent, I'm going to intonate with little accent. <laughs> to summarize, right, prepare your hand with the right wrist angle, make your arm light and gentle, move your elbow ahead. Play only the melody with imagination, intonation and weight in a slow tempo with dynamics, just like I show you. Then simply add the second note. Gradually increase the tempo. Remember to still intonate the glyphs with your vocal cords. And notes in your imagination will simply become a glissando as well, like one stroke. So um, the most important thing that playing fast is just uh, should mirror what you actually feel inside so you have to feel also uh, you have to be able to also intonate very quick while playing glissando so i'm gonna go now faster which is finally gonna be easy <laughs> just a palm using the same principles that I did before. Uh, I just want to tell you that don't use this way or this way because from my experience <laughs> it never works out. No matter how nicely, gently, the skin of the bones will always be hurt and the skin over here will always have blasters. I was playing Debussy, I think, fireworks and there was like Gliss <laughs> on the black keys on Forte. Uh, I was playing when I was 13. I didn't have any idea about weight. I was hurting my hand because I was pressing the keys trying to play Forte. I was not using the right way. So don't make the same mistakes. Now, sometimes, okay, let me show you. So for me, I think this is the best. If we're talking about the the loud glissandos. Now, sometimes for even better control of sounds in a very delicate glissando on black keys, you can simply use fingers uh, like in this example of Ondine. So 
that's about it. I hope it was fun and informative. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.